Welcome, Albert Cummings. Yeah. It's going to be an excited week because you have a, a new baby you're going to show the world this week. I, I got a new ship that I'm going to smash a wine bottle on, on, <laughs> on and let it go into the harbor. That's what, that's what, Let's see if it sails. Album is called 10. Well, for obvious reasons. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. It's the 10th album. It, it, it kind of named itself, but... but it, it's a it's a 10 for as far, far as I've ever done for an album. It's a 10 for me, man. It's it's <laughs> a, I think it's the biggest record I've ever done. I think it's 10 times bigger than all my other records combined, actually. On on what purpose? I've I've I, uh, I got the, the link this afternoon. So I just before we met, I, I heard some songs and there was even a song on it that you recorded on the first album already. And I know why you recorded while well, you recorded for the second time i now know it and now i heard it now i know and you may explain why you did it well that was that's uh you're obviously talking about beautiful bride and that's one yes, of the first that's that the I one ever wrote. and uh it's the first time that i ever publicly performed was on that song so uh i sang that at my wedding reception to my wife and you know i always wanted to record that the right way i always wanted to like uh make sure that song was special enough because a lot of people have loved that song. That's that song is used a lot for weddings and things. And okay. I think the new version, uh, I always wanted to have strings on it. I always wanted it to have, you know, the, the, the command of what the song's message is. And I think I got that. I don't know. Maybe I could do it even better. I, I just, one of my old favorite songs for sure. And uh, I always wanted to record it with a full, full band, so to speak. So, when I first did it, it was just me and a and a little bit of a keyboard behind me, and that's it. So, yeah, but the vocals, the vocals are even better. So, well, I hope I hope they are. I hope I'm growing as a vocalist. <laughs> yeah, you always hope, but you never know. You never yeah, know. Yeah, that's, that's my focus. You know, yeah. Well, to grow at everything, to grow at everything, the whole package. What what figures me, and that's probably. Uh, more people say that you you always had a certain country vibe on uh, a lot of stuff and it became even more now um probably if you're gonna record a, an album in nashville it's come with the package <laughs> but That's i love true. it i like it true there's definitely some country in there and you know i mean people say well what your, your music's changing or what it's like no it's not changing i'm just letting people see it it's it's what's there yeah and i I'm, I'm kind of at my point in my life where it's like, I just got to be honest with what I do. And, and I, yeah, I grew up playing five string banjo, you know, I'm like, yeah. I'm a little country bumpkin inside of me, but, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place. I love rock. I love blues. I love country. I love gospel. You know, I love bluegrass and stuff like that. So I don't know if you got far enough into it to hear the song, uh, meet the man but that's more of a gospel type song i'm looking at another picture for me i i've seen them all yeah well what, what strikes me there was always uh, a couple of songs with a real horn section behind it yeah that was a yeah. real full that you you could hear the organs you hear the the, the organ the, the the brass part out of it i love that even too because at the end of it there was still a really good guitar solo in the in the back of it that push it all <laughs> where it needs to be yeah yeah you gotta have that right you, you can't do, <laughs> i can't do a record without some guitar on it but but you know the guitar was a tool on this record it's not a guitar record but a lot of people are doing it. i mean all the guitar magazines are writing about me so the guitar players seem to like it so far so we're getting some really good press from the major guitar outlets, you know, guitar player premiere and vintage guitar. And that's exciting. You know, it's good to be recognized on it, but that's not my, uh, that's not my whole mission. I want to be the best entertainer I can be and to be a better guitar player. That helps. <laughs> that certainly helps. Well, I think uh, writing songs that reach out to people that will help. And apparently in America, it will help that Finn's Gill is uh, on, 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 a, on a song. And I love that song. It's absolutely, it's a lot of humor in it. I, and, and it is, yeah. A, yeah. it's a story it's, I can refer to. Yeah, that's right. I think you probably can relate to that. <laughs> yeah. 
I bet you've heard last call being yelled at you before, you know? Yeah, and and and, <laughs> and I even uh, didn't listen to it. <laughs> Still, we went along. <laughs> what else? Then you're then that, that's the part that's the second verse of the song. How you went to another place that's open later. Yeah, that's okay. A, that's what that song is. Yeah, that's a true story. That song. Last call for alcohol. Right. Fourth song on that track. I'm yeah. absolutely going to use that one on the radio show. <laughs> but I guess it, it always helps to have a major star on that uh, who, who does some helping for you. And that looks. Yeah. Were you starstruck when you recorded it with him? I mean, it's Vince Gill. That's like the, the I mean, he's the number one guy, you know? It's just, <laughs> it's Gill. I mean, we were, we did this record at Peter Frampton's like private studio. And I mean, that's another starstruck, but I mean, the producer himself, Chuck Ainley is, I mean, he's one of the Nashville, one of the top, he's like royalty in Nashville, Chuck. And just to have, just to work with him, was like music royalty to me. So it's like all of it's one of those pinch moments, you know. It's, I've, it's I've, like, I've been a few times to Nashville. Is that recording studio on that famous recording row and and up nah, in Nashville? That's just the tourist area where all the where all you know the the strip. No, uh, not the strip. It's uh, the where the old recording studios are. That's somewhat uh, outside of Nashville, downtown Nashville. Yeah. So so. I think most of the studios are moving out of the general downtown. And I think it's, it, I don't know why other than, you know, the cost of the cost of being located downtown is pretty, you know, and, 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 and I don't know. I, I you know, there's, there's a, oh, there's a recording studio in everybody's house there now, you know what I mean? With the new, with the new, uh, software and things you can do i mean you can you can record in your living room and make it sound good if you know how to do it i don't know how to do it but no you've I, seen in the COVID period a lot of bands were doing home gigs and that were really sounding good yeah right how did you manage in those two years still that carpentry business yeah we still have some things going on but i i really uh we're trying to trying to like trying to really uh change my focus you know i haven't I haven't been able to pursue music the way I've wanted to pursue music since I've started this. And that's because my boys were young and I didn't want to be out. I, I had a, I had a time years ago that I was out with BB King and I was gone for like six weeks. And I, my son was probably like seven years old at that time, my youngest son. And I came home and I could tell that he had grown and that <laughs> hurt me. It was like, my boys need their dad around. I'm going to have to put this on hold until they're big enough. Well, he's 21 now. And he could care less where dad's going. So I'm, I'm like ready to go and do this. And uh, I can always, I can always come back and build things. You know, I'm <laughs> about that. I've, I've literally been in the music world on a real small part-time basis since I've started this. So I've made some really good traction with just a little bit of time. So I'm I'm really anxious to start putting more time into it, and I feel like I've got the, I feel like I've got the ship that's gonna that's gonna sail me to where I want to go on this record. I really do. I I'm excited about this record. <laughs> I know it shows. Gorgeous, but I'm really excited about this record. It shows. <laughs> it really shows. <laughs> well, we spoke before, and we spoke one time before when you visited the, the Netherlands, and uh, that was a rainy gig. I can remember that. It was pouring. It was pouring, but still, I loved it absolutely, and I'm I'm sure to hope that uh, one day you can cross the ocean and, and and do some European touring. But I guess America is ready for you now, and yeah, you're the guy who can read a room, you can play what they want, and even now with this new record, show them what you have. Yeah, well, that's true. You know, that is a very key point. Is is. Uh... Uh, you know, I, I never use a set list or anything like that. Yeah. And I probably will start to do something, especially with this record, because I want to go literally play the whole record for the for the audience. That's what I want to do with this. And usually I'm a mixture of old, new, and, and I'm sure I'll always be that way. But but yeah, you have to be able to read the room because not every crowd is the same. And 
you can't go out there expecting they're going to like this and that. And you, you know, I, I usually try to play something and I, I test reactions. And if I'm getting that, I'll kind of lean more towards that. And I could tailor a set completely different venue to venue if I need to. Um, but man, it was so fun to be over there. And I, I mean, especially that just like, of course it was raining, but you know what? All those people stood in the rain for me. Yep. That was really interesting. And I remember standing out in the rain with them, like, you know, trying to be there with them in that moment. I, I remember a gig in Canada, the same thing. The people came and it was pouring and I walked out into the crowd and played in the rain with them because they're standing in the rain. Why shouldn't I, you know, and that's how I feel about it. It's like, we're all in this together and I hope I can come back. You know, I, I, I the COVID really, it, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's slowly it recuperating. You, but, but again, on, on the, on this very same front, there's always a silver lining somehow to me. And my little silver lining is that I got to do this record with some of the greats because they were a little bit slower than they would be. And that's how I was able to get this oh. done. So that, that, if that didn't happen, I wouldn't have had that. So yeah, there's a lot of that in our lives, right? It, it's always some little thing that changes something and, or maybe some big thing that changes something and you got to let it take you where it's going to take you. How did you feel when you came in and that room with your songs, you written them, you had a certain vision, how they should sound and then pitched them to, to Peter Frampton or that producer you just mentioned that, that they're a little bit starstruck means you must be young. It's a, did you feel humble or days? No, those are mine songs. And this is the idea I have. Well, uh, uh, I get, I get really excited and I get, uh, it's like every show. And I had this conversation with BB King once, and this is, it's not nerves that you feel. Uh, maybe with some people, but, but BB used to tell me that he was nervous every time he went up to play a show. I mean, he was in his seventies when I was talking with him and, you know, and touring with him a lot. And he said he became, came to realize, and this changed my whole outlook that he came to realize that that wasn't nervousness. That was excitement. He was feeling excitement. And if you, if you convince yourself that that's your nerves, you can cripple yourself. Yeah. But if you realize that it's excitement and that of course you feel excited to go out and share your energy with people and share your music. And that's what I feel. I feel that all the time. So every time I walk on stage, I feel that every time I go to in the studio, I feel that, but here I am, I walk in the studio and, and mind you, I'm the only player on the studio on this album that hasn't won a Grammy. And I hope <laughs> to that someday. Yet, that's, a, yet. that's a, that's a major goal of mine. <laughs> guy on there that hadn't won a grammy i i think that's true i might be i might be fibbing here but i'm pretty sure they're all grammy winners because they're all the first call players in nashville and these guys are uh, some of the most incredibly talented people i've ever been with i mean we have greg morrow on drums we have glenn warp on bass we have rob mcnelly on guitar and we have uh, michael rojas on on all the key parts piano or organ yeah, and I googled guy, him. He was holding every time I googled him a picture, he holding someone some trophy up. My Rojas. That's because they win everything because they're so good. These, <laughs> I've never been in a room with people that were more genius oriented about their craft than I was with this. And it right from Chuck, right, you know, Chuck says, you know, he he joked, well, I can turn knobs pretty good, you know, in that Nashville way. Oh, I can turn knobs pretty good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can turn knobs pretty good. You are like you are like a genius with this. And then he knows how to communicate with all these other guys, but they know how to communicate with each other. And I mean, Rob McNally guitar. He was like playing lead guitar with uh, uh, Bob Seger, you know. But that's that's like one name of many. These guys play with the best of the best because they are the best of the best. And so. I went in with like 30 songs, not knowing which songs I was going to pick because I, I, I knew I wanted 10 or 12 or however many of those songs I ended up with 13, 
of the songs that I went with. They're all mine. They're all, they're all, you know, I wrote them all. And I would literally, we'd get together in the control room and, and I'd play the song acoustically. And they'd, they'd say, all right, what, what, what's that? Let, let's hear that. Let's hear that again. Or let's hear the chorus again. Or let's, what do you got? What's the bridge on that one? You know, and they'd, they'd write out a little chart. We'd all talk about it. And then we'd go into the studio. And literally, this is how every song went. And we'd start playing it a little bit. And they're like, what do you think of that, Albert? Or, and I'm like, oh, it's a little, you know, it's it's a little different than I thought, but I kind of like this, or can you try this? And then, then they'd all have suggestions. And then Chuck would chime in. And then all of a sudden I got this huge track that I, I never thought was ever gonna come. But what's fun is that it, I can play all of these songs on an acoustic guitar, just like I could when I went into the studio. So nothing really changed so drastically in the song. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. they just complemented better pieces and better parts and they helped me because they're way smarter than me on how to do things. You know, they're like, well, let's try this or let's, why don't you go to that? Why don't you play that part higher? So the harmony is going to work on the other guitar. I mean, this, this is the type of things that went into this record that just was mind blowing to me. It was just like, I learned so much, you know, I learned so much and it made me such a better player that I can't wait to go in the studio and show what I've learned. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's really what it is. It's like, I've, I've, I, it made me grow as an artist and, and as a person. So are you, are you still have 16 songs left? <laughs> yeah, I, I always have plenty of songs. <laughs> For songs. I got plenty of songs. I can write songs pretty easily. I heard a guitar player once say, or uh, he said, if you can play a song acoustic or you can whistle a song and it still is a good song, then you know it's a good one. Yeah, that's true. The it's got a melody and it's got all the stuff that go with it. And I don't know, this this album, I've kind of really let people into my own personal space because there's like, there's there's everything from, there's there's hard work, there's love, there's death, there's you know making your way all that stuff is in this album that people can relate to and one song that they just released friday that just finally came out i don't know if you've heard it yet but uh, it's called two hands yeah i love that song and every you know it's basically anybody who works or basically however you want to define the term works i mean we all earn our living with our two hands and i, I never heard really a good song to describe that so i wrote that i went to dinner what the second night in the studio the second or third night i don't know what it was but i went to dinner by myself it was covid so i'm sitting in this i'm sitting at this long bar eating dinner and i had this idea for that song and i wrote that song on my phone while i was eating dinner typed it into my phone and i went to the studio the next morning and i kind of worked it out on guitar and messed around with it because i didn't you know, I wasn't smart enough to bring a guitar back to the hotel room with me. I'd left that in the studio. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I go, I go to the studio and I work the song out and here come the guys around 10 or whatever, 9, 30, 10, whenever we were starting. And I said, I, I think I want to try this song today. And they're like, yeah, yeah. So we went all through it. And then after we cut it, I told them, yeah, I wrote that last night. And they were like, you got to be kidding me. That song <laughs> was less than, that song wasn't even 24 year, hours old. And it had been, it was bang, recorded in Nashville. That's what's cool about that song. That, that is really like, that's because it's the way they made me feel. They all made me feel so welcome. And so like, uh, I don't know if it's a bad term or not, but they made me feel worthy, Rob. They made me feel like this is, this guy has something to say. We want to hear it. And it was I like, it just was such a beautiful experience. I guess they saw something in you that you always had, but maybe were afraid to let it out. <laughs> I, I think so. I think they did. And, you know, that it goes to that. Like, I get the question a lot. Well, you, you know, you should have. Well, don't you wish you started when you were younger? It's like, well, I did. But I, I mean, the way my life worked out, I, I, I wouldn't have been able to write this record when I was 20. You know, yeah, I, I, I understand. And Two Hands is a, it looks a beautiful song for Mike Rowe. That's a, that's a guy who uh, pops to mind where you don't know if he... Yeah, that's right. I should get that song to Mike Rowe because 
It is. It's a, it's about a job. It's about two hands. He has a, he has a cool way of saying that we should respect anybody who's working hard and get his hands dirty. Yeah. Yeah. For the show. Yeah. It is a, it is a working. It's is, a working there an, is, is there an official release party planned for you? No, I don't have any release parties planned. <laughs> you just play. Yeah, are you still I, are you still on the label from uh, the the Dutch label you did the last uh, record on or is it No 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 they we did the rec I did that record with them and that was what we were in uh, uh, Provoke that was the one yeah No it was I don't even think it was out then but it came out no it wasn't because it came out the week prior to covid happening Oh and uh, of course everybody shelled it you know and it never it never saw the light of day it debuted i think at number two or something on billboard and then it never had a life it, they never not one more ad got run on that not one more re, i mean everybody was worried about this pandemic i mean it was, that was the end of that record so He's, they didn't want to they didn't want to you know uh they didn't want to do another record with me at that time. And I knew what I wanted to do. And I knew I had a big one on my hands and they, they kind of said, well, you do whatever you want. You know, we'll talk after the pandemic basically. So I've got this great album and, uh, um, I'm really happy that I'm, that it's under my own, you know, it's Ivy music company, which is my own label. And, okay. And, but what's different about this is not like, you know, self-release and I put it out in a, you know, I mean, we have a tremendously large, uh, there's 20 some people working this record from PR, from, from the marketing end, from the radio Ooh. end, from the, uh, the, the, the road press and the, the whole thing, everybody, a lot of people working on this record. Yeah. But you see a lot of bands that they, the major sales are done at the shows and yeah. they are now picking up, but you're going all the way. I saw yeah, and I saw have, a few tracks on Spotify and YouTube. You're releasing uh, a few tracks uh, at a time, and uh, and I'm happy to have listened to the complete uh, record a few minutes ago, <laughs> one hour ago. I just went through <laughs> it, so so we're gonna oh, use yeah. it in our radio show. Uh, that gonna be aired about ten days from now. So uh, yeah, well, you've got plenty to pick from, depending on your mood, right? You can yeah, <laughs> that's 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 true. No. I mean, some of the stuff, if you're, if you're more blues related, I mean, some of the stuff like Beautiful Bride, that's not really a blues song, but I tell you, a lot of people are going to like that. Uh, we're not really a blues radio show. We do, we do all the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Throw it all in there. It's like a, it's like a good uh, jambalaya or something. Just throw it all in there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I love jambalaya. <laughs> <laughs> How's the uh, how's the show's been over there though? I mean, it is like, like, we're picking up now. We're huh? just uh, let's see. We did some live recordings for our show, and uh, so let's see. We were just allowed a month ago to let audience again back in, and that uh, they are not being uh, huh? forced into one and a half meter distance, social distancing, or wearing masks. That's just a month ago. Is that everything's gone? But they're picking up, but you'll see the audience is still. It's not the numbers that we're used to, and sure, I heard no. it from from a lot of festivals. Yeah, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of uh, people are are maybe they're afraid or they have to go back in, or they have to maybe the the financial uh, they, sure. they they got a financial hit that is yeah we, whatever I, it is it is it is what it is and and people when they feel comfortable they'll they'll go out you know and a lot of there's a lot of a lot of false information that got out there's a lot of a lot yeah. of stuff I think, I think the world got taken advantage of in a lot of things and I think oh, we all got oh, scared, absolutely you know? that that and some people. We, some people don't want to realize that that stuff really happened and whatever. So it's it, it, people, uh, some places will go and we'll see completely packed house and some places will go and you'll see half a house and it, it you, just, you just don't know. And I'm just happy that people come and, you know, on, on a new world is a lot of people got used to streaming things and seeing things without having to leave their house. And if that's what they want to do, that's fine with me. I don't, I don't have a problem either way. You want to wear a mask or whatever. It's hard yeah, for me to wear. When I'm singing, but 
there are, <laughs> yeah. but the ones the ones we did, we could really see the smile on people's faces, and our, yeah. even on stage that they were living right. up, you know, they were missing, really missing it, being in front of people. Right. Well, the whole the whole social element, you know, that's that's something I like. I like the I like the people. I like to go and talk to people and visit with people. And, yeah. And you know, hang out. I love that. That's that's part of the whole thing for me. So that that was that was an ugly time, and uh, hopefully we don't kind of. Yeah, go let's that. hope that this summer everybody gets away from that uh, that feeling and and back in business. Yeah, because fear sells things, right? Sells yeah, things. they have to free themselves. I think that's the best way to put it now. And it's getting slowly there, but I last week I talked to an organizer from some festival, and he said, yeah, we're really still missing 30 40% of the audience we had before the pandemic. Well, right. That's a lot. That's a huge amount. And it's and it's hard to it's hard to function like that. But uh, you know, time time will come and people will oh, I'm a positive thinking man so we, that's why we always keep do what we keep what we like to do and I know we, I all I'm sure that like you who just um, cut the records because they have a song they want to let the people know and when it, you gave to Nashville and wanted to give them the best yeah. and you gave them the best and that showed that will always yeah, yeah. come come I don't know the correct word, but that always will survive. Yeah, and it's something that's always going to be with us from now on. I mean, this is not <laughs> anything that's ever going to go away. So, you know, it's, you know, whatever. I just, it's it's going to be there. It's what it is. There's nothing we're going to do to change it. It's your baby, and it's going to see the the day of light and the end of this week. And I'm really, really uh, hope that it's going to be the next Grammy winner. You have to wait for a year because last night they were <laughs> all being announced. <laughs> but yeah, I guess yeah. you'll manage that year. You will manage that. I, I, I would be, know. that would be a big uh, oh, accolade be, on your career. Sure. That'd be giant. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, That is a big help for any artist for sure. Oh, absolutely. And I wish for it. Absolutely. I wish for it. Thank you for this uh, conversation. And uh, I really, really hope then uh, say hi to Christina that you have a really, really good PR and many, many. Yeah, I hope that he is going to be in the mainstream radio in the, in the States and then we'll Europe see. will pick up. It'll be the people. It'll be the people that take it. There's nothing I can. All I can do is is push the ship out into the water and hopefully it'll sail. I mean, there's nothing I can do from that point on. I mean, I, I can push it and I can tour it and I can try to play it, but I, I'm hoping it'll have its own little life. And uh, if people like it, they'll share it with their friends. That's all I can. That's well, all and, I can if they, and if they like it, go see them live. Shake it and shake your hand, buy a CD from you. And, and <laughs> that's what I love. I love the, the what you never know what's going to happen if you see somebody live. Yeah. yeah, and I have a drink, even if it is <laughs> the last call for alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> really right. hope to see you back again once live, maybe over there, or not was on this kind of side of the pond, but you never know. Thank you, uh, Albert. I'm ready. I'm ready to come. <laughs> you were born. <laughs> we know. We know you're ready, <laughs> and I think we are ready for you too. Good. <laughs>